So right now we are in the final stages of three different HasLab campaigns. One of which has long since been fully funded and the other two are really struggling. And HasLab seemed quite desperate. So what I wanna do in today's video is kind of discuss some of the poor decisions that have been made regarding the HasLab Skystriker and the HasLab Black Series Rancor. So stay tuned. Come with me toy fans. This video is proudly brought to you by Valiverse, the creative company behind the most exciting new action figure range available on the market today, Action Force. Make sure you visit the valiverse.com website to purchase your amazing Action Force comics, toys, and other products, and follow Valiverse on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook to keep up to date with the latest product news. All the links are in the description below. Shop Valiverse, because it's time for action. Hey toy fans, my name is Tony and welcome back to the Analog Toys YouTube channel. Now, first off, I will just touch on the HasLab project for the Ghostbusters Proton Pack first. This has long since been fully funded, as I said, um, but I'm not quite sure why people are, are backing this. I mean, if you want to go, go right ahead, but the glaring problem with that particular campaign is the fact that the Proton Pack does not come with the Neutrona wand. You have to buy that separately. But if you look at Hasbro's website, it says that the backers of the Proton Packs can order up to five Proton Packs. Limit five per customer. And then you go over and look at the Neutrona wand and it's a limit of two per customer. Now, I don't really know why anyone would want five Proton Packs unless, you know, you want to deck your whole family out for Halloween as Ghostbusters or something. Um, but you're going to end up with, you know, two Ghostbusters who've actually got a Neutrona wand um, and the other three have just got backpacks. It's, um, it should have come as a package deal. Like, I know it's going to make it more expensive, but the Proton Pack without the Neutrona wand is pretty much pointless. But enough about that. Let's talk about the Rancor and the Sky Striker. So after the last tier unlocks were announced, and we discussed this on the 3POA last week with Bobby and Laser Pants, the backers of the Rancor were very, very disappointed. We got a Gamorrean Guard that we've already had, a Salacious Crumb, which makes no sense whatsoever. He was never in the Rancor pit, a newly tooled Jedi Luke, and some bones. And fans were... Pretty upset with these unlocks, you know. I, you know, there's the hashtag going round, no Ula, no Moolah. I can kind of understand why Hasbro won't do Ula, but I can understand why they won't do Ula at retail. It's not a retail item. The HasLab uh, Black Series Rancor, you know, it's, it's, it's crowdfunded. It's not going to appear on store shelves. Um, but the other glaring omission was obviously Malakili the Rancor Keeper. So after the backlash, when the final kind of tiers were revealed, this HasLab project went from around 5,200 backers and it dropped down to 4,700, about 500 people pulled out to the point where HasLab have turned around and gone, wait, 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 don't pull your money. We're going to give you the Rancor Keeper. And, and since they've done that, a lot of people have jumped back on board and they've now gone back up to the 5,200 backers that they had prior to the last lot of announcements. Um, I can't remember how many backers they need to fund this. I think it's 9,000. So, you know, I, I, I think potentially this will get made. But the issue here is that, well, first of all, the Rancor Keeper is not another unlock. It doesn't require any more additional backers. So what Hasbro are telling you is that eh, we could have included a new fully tooled figure in that original price anyway. But if they have not done any work on this already, on the Rancor Keeper figure, they're way, way behind in development here. So I think that throwing in the Rancor Keeper at this late stage to try and entice backers, I've got a bad feeling that, you know, you're kind of, 18 months or maybe not quite that much. I think they've said about 15 months before this item ships. I think throwing in a Rancor Keeper that they've not done any development on already is really going to push out that time frame. 
you're potentially looking up to, I, I would say like 20 months um, because they've now included a fully tooled figure that they've done no work on so far. So that's a risk that you need to be aware of. Now I've heard some other people online saying that one of the reasons the Black Series Rancor is struggling to get funded is because it's too big and it won't fit on a collector's shelf. I completely disagree with that because otherwise, you know, the, the Sentinel wouldn't have got fully funded, Galactus wouldn't have got fully funded. And obviously they're really, really tall figures. Um, but then you think about the Black Series Snowspeeder, which was a retail release item. That might not be tall, but that's got a huge footprint and that's still sold. I don't know how well it's sold, but I bought one. I actually really like the Black Series Snowspeeder. So that theory that people don't want to back the Black Series Rancor because it's too big, I don't think that holds a lot of water. I genuinely believe that this is struggling to be backed because Hasbro are not delivering the unlocked tiers that fans want. Okay, yes, now we're getting the Rancor Keeper, but there's also the potential that he's gonna look like this. You don't know what he looks like. You know, and if they're rushing to get this into production to actually meet that kind of, was it early 2023, first quarter 2023 um, ship date, um, they could really cut some corners with this figure. I also truly believe that had they have just brought out the Rancor on its own and sold it at retail for 200 bucks, it would have sold easily. I probably would have bought one, but I'm not going to put my money into a hat. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of putting money into these kind of crowdfunding projects when they're not um, independent projects, you know, from, from startup companies like Valiverse or the RoboSkull Kickstarter, which I'll, I'll talk about in a, in a little bit, um, very briefly. I do believe in supporting, you know, startup companies because Hasbro needs some competition. They've gobbled up pretty much every toy company, you know, that we grew up with, barring Mattel. But competition in the marketplace is what's going to make these companies continually try and improve the products that they're delivering. So I am a, I am a fan of supporting you know, things like the Robo Skull Mark II, the Valiverse Kickstarter, I think there's some Marauders stuff. Like I'm not, the, the only thing I've pre-ordered is, is um, Valiverse Series 1. Um, just, I'm simply not interested in the, in the other stuff. But I don't want to give my money over to a massive global corporation and then have to wait 18 months to have the product delivered. Do I think the Black Series Rancor will get funded? Yes, probably it will because it's Star Wars and there are enough dummies in the world who will, you know, they'd buy, they'd buy diapers if they had the Star Wars logo on them. Um, I, I believe the Rancor will get funded. I'm not as confident with the G.I. Joe Sky Striker. That's really struggling to be backed and it's only got a few days left. And I actually believe that the original announcement of the um, G.I. Joe Sky Striker, that entire G.I. Joe panel with all the classified releases was easily the, the best panel of PulseCon. I think that presentation was excellent. Um, you know, they came out of the gate swinging. They, they, they came prepared to do business, you know what I mean? They had, a, they had the grey model of the Sky Striker to be able to show you the display stand. They had all these coloured digital renderings. They showed all of the unlocked tiers straight away. But now we get to a point where, you know, several days left, it's struggling a little bit more than the Rancor is to get fully funded. So they've announced another um, set of figures and a set of stickers. So we've got a, a Cobra Commander, um, a slightly recolored Cobra Trooper, and then Cobra Flight Ground Crew, along with a set of stickers to make the Sky Striker a Cobra Sky Striker. And much like the Rancor Keeper with the Rancor, this is not another unlocked tier. This is something they're gonna throw in with the basic package, even if it's only the basic package that gets funded and the other unlocked tiers don't get funded. What Hasbro are revealing here with both the Cobra figures and the Rancor Keeper is actually how much free stuff they can give you within that original you know, price and that original sort of backing target. 
I think if people hold off a bit more, you might get a bit more. You never know. So that's one thing that they've revealed, and it's a really crucial piece of information that I think collectors need to keep at the forefront of their mind when they're considering backing any future HasLab projects. Do I think the G.I. Joe Sky Striker will get funded? No, I don't. And the problem with the G.I. Joe Sky Striker getting funded is the simple fact that so many collectors, fans of the three and three quarter inch O-ring scale have already got one. Okay, it doesn't come with, you know, the display stand, all of the um, afterburner, plug-in effects and missile effects and all this stuff. I've had this Geo Joe Sky Striker, I want to say for about five years. I bought it at the start of the channel and I paid $200 for a complete Sky Striker with a nice vintage box. Bear in mind, that was five years ago. So I jumped onto eBay today and, you know, had a look to see what the last complete Sky Striker sold for. And for 200 bucks, you can get a nice minty complete Sky Striker minus the box. So I have to assume, I couldn't find one that had been sold with the box. Um, I have to assume that, you know, 250, which is what the HasLab Sky Striker um, requires funding wise, you can get a nice vintage Sky Striker in the box. And this is not, was not a rare toy. Hasbro made millions of these back in the day. I know collectors that have got, you know, real hardcore G.I. Joe three and three quarter collectors have got the USSS flag with like three or four of these on the deck. It's not a hard vintage toy to acquire. That's where the Robo Skull kind of differs. Right. I did not back the Robo Skull simply because I have an original vintage Robo Skull and I don't want a modern upgrade. I'm a, I'm a primarily vintage collector and I'm a fan of the vintage one. But Palatoy's Robo Skull is a very rare toy and it's very expensive to acquire. So I can totally understand why people wanted to back this new Robo Skull. It kind of makes sense. It's not like they did a Kickstarter campaign for the deep sea diving platform from Action Force Series 1. You know, a, a toy that's relatively easy to acquire. Well, maybe not complete, there's lots of loose parts on it, but it's nowhere near as rare or as desirable or as popular as the vintage Robo Skull. The Sky Striker is a different kettle of fish. These are a dime a dozen vintage toy. Yes, they hold value because, you know, there's lots of loose parts, but you know, 200 bucks for a large, complete vintage vehicle from the early 1980s. Go out and get yourself a vintage one, get the original. And that's why I think a lot of people aren't backing the Sky Striker. Another very odd decision, and I discussed this on the 3POA with Bobby, is that at the moment, Hasbro, with their G.I. Joe brand, they're putting all their eggs in one basket, and that is the six inch classified range. It had a really bumpy start, but it's now doing really, really well. And I love all of the, the latest announcements. Spirit, Storm Shadow. Okay, I wish Outback wasn't Tiger Force, but it's still a great figure. Why did they not make the first G.I. Joe HasLab in that scale? Why didn't they give us a vamp towing a howl in six inch scale? That would have that would have been backed very early on in the campaign a lot like the uh ghostbusters proton pack i believe i think at the end of the day what it comes down to is that there are decision makers at hasbro who are really really out of touch with what fans actually want fans wanted the rancor but they didn't want salacious crumb they don't need another gamorian guard and they don't need another retooled luke they wanted the rancor keeper off the bat and they wanted Ula off the bat. Yeah, throwing the bones in the cardboard. That should have been part of the basic package, not an unlock tier and cardboard backdrop. So I'm sure there are different, you know, different departments at Hasbro and the decision makers in Star Wars are not the same decision makers in G.I. Joe. But, you know, of the last couple of years of pushing the G.I. Joe classified six inch range 
and the retro line really not doing very well. You know, we haven't even actually had any new announcements for the retro line. That's just died off. You know, they didn't announce anything for that at PulseCon. So really pushing the classified line and the six inch scale and doing really, really well with it and then making your first HasLab in a totally different scale and making a modern update of a toy that, you know, most vintage G.I. Joe collectors have already got. That was a pretty, pretty poor decision. So that's my thoughts on these two HasLab projects. Do I care if either of them get fully backed or not? No, I couldn't give a shit. I don't back HasLab projects. If these were available at retail, so the Black Series Rancor, the HasLab Sky Striker, I still wouldn't pick up the Sky Striker at retail because I've got a vintage original. Would I get the Black Series Rancor? If it was 200 bucks at retail, yes, I would because I collect six inch Black Series. Not everything, and I am trying to stick to Empire Strikes Back, but it would make an awesome centerpiece to your six inch scaled Star Wars collection. The other really dumb decision going on here is launching three HasLab campaigns at roughly the same time. I understand that not everyone is a collector and fan of all three properties, um, but I certainly like Ghostbusters, G.I. Joe and Star Wars. So not only have you got these three campaigns going on all at once, you know, struggling. It's like each department within Hasbro, the left hand's not talking to the right hand and they're competing against each other for the consumer's dollar. You know, what if you are a, a fan of all three, but you're on a budget, you've got to pick and choose. This would have worked much better for Hasbro if they had have staggered them. The other thing is that they're all ending in the next few days, just a few weeks before Christmas, when everyone is short of cash. We all need extra money at Christmas time for buying gifts, you know, buying your Christmas turkey, all of that stuff. Really poor timing, really poor timing. Across all three of these campaigns, there are some really dumb decisions being made. Selling people a HasLab Proton Pack, but there's no guarantee that they're going to be able to get themselves a Neutrona one because we don't even know if they're making them in the same quantities. And I don't believe they are, since they're telling customers that, you know, with the Proton Pack, there's a limit of five per customer, and with the one, there's a limit of two per customer. Clearly, they're not making the same quantities. That's a guess. But, you know, that's where we are. So, some pretty dumb decisions across the board. Hasbro needs to get their head out of their ass. Thank you all for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, you can check out my review of the original G.I. Joe Sky Striker up here, or you can check out some of our Star Wars videos by clicking the playlist down here, or subscribe to the channel by clicking here. Or support us on Patreon. There's tons and tons of extra content on Patreon, the link is in the description below.